Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. So this is going to be one of our final live shows of 2022, which Julie is amazing to say. Yes, I know. And what an interesting year it was. Well, here, think about this. How many live shows did we do in 2022 alone? 52 weeks in a year. That's a lot. (laughs) I mean, we rarely have replays. Usually just, you know, in between holidays or maybe a couple of days of travel, but these have all been live shows, guys. So if you missed any, you can get caught up. Holidays are a great time to podcast binge. So well over 200, maybe 250 live shows. Just this year. And we, right. And we, we have over on iTunes and on uh, Spotify and YouTube, I think we have over 2,000 podcasts. That's amazing. So if you're looking for something to do um, <laughs> over the holidays and you really want to binge, there you go. <laughs> An endless supply. And actually, we have over 5,000 past podcasts now, podcasts now, but they just don't get uh, past 2,000. They don't really publish them on iTunes or Spotify or anything. Mm-hmm. They cut you off at 2,000. In yes. any event, so yes, that's an extraordinary um, in number, but it also means that it's a great place for you guys to go and really get your skills on for 2023. Now, we've got some great news for you for, on today's show, and then we're going to be reading a I think very thoughtful email mm-hmm. that you received one of our coaching clients. Yes. So let's start with the great news, Julie. Yes. And again, this is from the National Association of Realtors, hot off the presses, not just fourth quarter report, but this is their end of year report. So this is probably as updated as it's going to be until the calendar flips. So here's the key two takeaways. NAR predicts uh, 4.78 million existing home sales next year in 2023. Now that prediction is down uh, 6.8% from 5.13 million in 2022. So when you compare 2022 to 2023, we uh, they're predicting that sales will be down just under 7%. Now, why is that great news? It's because the previous report to this and several others coming from economists in different places said to expect a 20% decline in sales, and now it's been ratcheted back to just seven. So that's fantastic, and that also means you take that uh, number, 4.78 million times two, because there's two sides to each transaction. That tells you how many commission checks will be transferred to agents' bank accounts. The question is, how many will go to you? So think about that. Nearly 10 million people, agents, are going to get paid next year. And the average commission, we're going to share this with you guys, is going to be roughly, what would we call it, Julie? Probably $10,000, $12,000. Yes, that's about right. So there's plenty of money to be earned. Um, you said something. I'm sort of curious about it. You said there were predictions of 20 to 30% reduction in home sales. I've heard that be, mm-hmm. uh, uh, that number before. Matter of fact, I probably had, I don't know, maybe 10, maybe 12 people text me asking me about that number in particular. Mm-hmm. Where did that sort, what was the source for that? That was, I think, NAR's previous report and a couple of other economists. I think that I, I'd have to look up exactly where they came from, but it seemed like during fourth quarter, that was sort of the talking point, is that we can all expect 20% fewer sales and suck it up, buttercup, and that's how it's going to be. I don't think it was NAR, Jules, because I Googled not. it. I don't think it was NAR. I okay. think it was one of these people that was trying to be fear-mongering agents into believing that the sky was going to fall and all these other you know doom and gloom things were going to happen. Because mm-hmm. I did do a little bit of light research on it. I figured, since mm-hmm. you write most of our sure. content, that you would have maybe come across something else. The fact that you didn't know where the source was probably tells us it came from a marketer, not from somebody frankly any of us well, and it did to. work to be honest the, yeah. there were a lot of agent freakouts, and so now uh, this is coming right from your national association of realtors so we're going to hang our hat on this stat yes maybe we'll have seven percent fewer sales and probably i look at the silver lining in that that was probably a lot of the fomo probably you know aspirational pricing sellers that weren't that serious so if you take out that seven percent from the market what's left is all of the serious especially sellers it's really never been a better time to be a listing agent. We'll talk about that in a second. But the the second talking point here, the annual median home prices, that's the other hot button. What's going to happen with pricing? No crash. Prices are expected to increase by 0.3% following a 9.6% gain 
overall in 2022. Now, Julie said the median uh, increase, that's different than average because most of the other numbers that you're seeing that you'll stumble across when looking for the average home sale or home value should increase by next year. Everyone, The average, I think, was like 5 or 6%. Yes. And it depends it's wor- on your market, of it, course. It's worth mentioning, if you've been in the business as long as Julie and I have, it was normal to have homes increase in value, inflate in value, by say two or maybe 3% per year, which means if you sold a house to somebody, they were going to have to stay in that house for a few years just to cover their selling costs when they put the house back for sale. And that sale. was true for a really long time. Oh, that yeah. wasn't just one year that we're talking about. Decades. That was year after year. In fact... For a long time, it was easy to figure out how to price something because you would take what they paid for it, figure out how many yep. years ago it was, and then add 3%. You'd be really pretty accurate. There is also another number that's kind of buried in here. Um, okay, there you go. Uni expects rents to rise yes. by 5% in 2023, following a 7% rise in 2022. So right there, that's it's we're going to cross I'm a threshold. Back. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, also, Yoon, again, is the head economist for NAR. He predicts foreclosure rates will remain, write this down, at historically low levels in 2023, comprising, get this, less than 1% of all mortgages. Now, keep in mind that only 50% of homeowners even have a mortgage, so it's less than 1% of them. It's virtually nothing, guys. And he expects a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage to settle around 5.7% as the Fed slows the pace of rate hikes to control inflation. I think that's 100% true. And it's, it's, it's not only because they'll feel that they've got a handle on inflation, whether that are, tr- is true or not, who knows. But it's because, frankly, they can't really afford to raise the rates much more because as they raise the rates, they also raise the debt service uh, you know, interest payments, basically. Yes. So the bondholder. So anyway, long story short. All good news. All I good think. news. And anyone who is trying to feed you or sell you into the belief that next year is going to be some sort of doomy and gloomy market, you've really got to question – not necessarily their motivation, but you got to question their, frankly, where they're going to for their information. Because if you're believing that next year is is not going to be meaningfully better than this year, which it should be for all of you, then what are you doing now? So it's an interesting psychological little you know head game to play with yourself. If you believe next year is going to be worse than today, you almost assuredly will make that true based on what you won't do today. In other words, if you believe that next year is going to be worse than today, home sales are going to be harder to get, things like that. You, you know, real estate's going to be in the doghouse the whole nine yards. I had explained to Zoe what in the doghouse meant this morning. I heard that. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, if you believe that, that means you're probably not going to be getting too much better at your skill set. That means you're not going to be learning how to chase listings. Yep. You're not going to be learning how to get expired listings because after all, you're going to start saying dumb things to yourself like, well, why would I want to list an expired listing that you know the previous agent couldn't list? Why would I want to be stuck with that? Blah, blah, blah. So your belief structure is, is essentially foundational into the success that you're going to experience tomorrow, you know, and then on forward. Because what tomorrow, what next year should be is a launching pad for you for the next three to five years. So do what you don't want to do and you don't want to do at the highest level now. Learn the skill set necessary. Be willing to pivot away from the passive lead generation and focus on the proactive lead generation. And really, guys, there's no limits to how many, how many people you can help and how much money you can make in this marketplace. That's right. So does coaching actually help you with this? Well, we're going to deep dive into an actual coaching client's uh, feedback on this. And, you know, you're probably thinking about coaching and wondering if that can strap some rocket boosters to your trajectory. Let's take a look at this email that just came in last week. This is from Brad Barnett, who's a fantastic agent in Orlando, Florida. And one of the few people I've talked to who actually grew up in Orlando. So if you have real estate leads, there's lots of relocation and, you know, lots of activity there. So send them to Brad Barnett in Orlando. Here's what Brad writes. Three things I did well. So uh, he says, I hope Zoe's tonsillectomy went well and she's making a speedy recovery. So thank you for that, Brad. Below is the homework you asked for. It was a great assignment and it has helped me prioritize for next year. I certainly found it effective to write it all down. So those of you who like to take notes, you can follow a similar pattern based on uh, Brad's homework. And the homework was, what are three things you did well in 2022? three things you did not do well in 2022, and three most important goals for 2023. Three simple but very in-depth questions. Let's give them some context to Brad. He's been a coaching client of our uh, Premier Coaching Program, the same coaching program that you guys can join right now for free when you text the word Premier to 47372. So since mid-year, basically. Yes, So he he actually joined, I was thinking about this, right before the market really started to shift. That's true. Maybe by a month or two. And Brad, just to give some color so you guys kind of know his profile, 
He grew up in Orlando. This is his, I believe, fifth full year in real estate. He was in sales before, but something much more obscure than real estate. He sold uh, numismatics, which are coins and stamps. Aren't you fancy? I know. Good luck spelling that, right? Uh, but his specific goal, so that we can take a look at the results of these questions, what he wanted from coaching was to go from a predictable deal per month, give or take, okay, to three transactions per month predictably. And I have to say, he is on track to do that in at least January and February at this point after several months of coaching. So those are his specific goals to go from one deal a month to three deals a month consistently. So other than for grammar, Julie, and some spelling issues, I uh, edited this thing. So you go ahead and read it from sure. stem to stern. You got it. And we'll let's reserve and hold back on our commenting until you've read the whole thing, mm -hmm. because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be listening to you read this. They're going to say that is exactly like me. That's what I thought. And that's and I did get permission from Brad to share this. Any of you typing away wondering about that? OK, so the first question, three things I did well in 2022. Here's Brad's answers. Number one, I improved my listing skills. I still have loads more to learn and sharpen, but I am no longer winging it and understand why professionals earn and retain business. Who would I want to work with? Offer that type of service. Who would I want to work with? Be that person. I improved my, second thing is I improved my physical health. A new exercise plan paired with a new diet resulted in a noticeably improved physique, energy, and confidence. Number three to that answer, I improved my conversation skills. I now ask much better questions and listen to the answers. By the way, that's known as scripting, listeners. This allows me to gain useful knowledge and others enjoy speaking with me. I'm careful not to relate things people say to my own experiences and try to leave the focus on them and their experiences. It's not about me. I don't have to have an opinion about everything or a relatable anecdote about myself. I know you want to comment on that, but avoid it. Because that's okay. so brilliant. Don't you, aren't you super well, proud of him for saying that? Totally. And one of the things I love about Brad is how introspective he is and how he, he does take things seriously, but he doesn't stay in analysis paralysis. He does something with it. But I have to, do, yeah. to throw this out there. That is the antithesis <laughs> of what everyone else is teaching you guys, especially, I know. especially people that are wanting you guys to focus all your best energies on becoming so, you know, famous on social media. You know, that is the exact, what we just, what Brad just read to you or Julie just read that Brad said is the exact opposite of what everyone else is trying to get you to be some narcissistic, you know, virtual superstar. Look at me all the time. Right. Yeah. And we're teaching you guys to be of service to other people. We're teaching you, we're showing you what to say and how to say it. And the feedback like that, it, I mean, emotionally touches me because it means we're doing our job. Absolutely. Me as well. And one thing that Brad didn't write, and I just know from his coaching calls, is that by focusing it on who he's talking to and less about himself, his conversations have just gotten easier and less stressful. So three things I did not do well in 2022 in Brad's words. Point number one, my organization was subpar. Simple systems are starting to emerge in my quest for efficiency. The lack of these systems resulted in wasted time looking for items that could be easily found if I'm organized. By the way, all that is included in Premier Coaching. All the systems for every aspect of your business are already done. Just implement. Yes. Next part of this, three things I did not do well in 2022. I didn't stick to my daily schedule as tightly as I could have. This is also a time suck. Moving from fire to fire wasted lots of momentum when switching tasks so often. Sticking to the schedule will increase efficiency and effectiveness. I bet our listeners can relate to that one. And last but not least on this questions, what wasn't done well in 2022, focus and discipline have been historically poor. Understanding that repetitious boredom and doing what I don't want to do when I don't want to do it at the highest level will pay off more than I could ever imagine. This has inspired me to improve on these skills. I want ever increasing levels of success and this is how I will have it. That's, yeah. That really sounds more like an affirmation than just an answer to the coaching question, right? Because well, I believe him. Well, 100%. <laughs> but I'm also appreciating the fact that he got that 100% correct and um, wasn't just his version of it. No, that's right. And again, he's implementing and living this. And that's the difference between coaching clients that find success fairly quickly versus the ones that are getting ready to get started. Now, so focus in on um, some of these thoughts. What, like, what are you internalizing? What are you noticing from the words that he's using and how he's, ex he's expressing himself? He's not spending a lot of time talking about his big why or his feelings or his emotional state nope. or his motivation or you know following his passion. He's uh, talking about how to become a true professional. If you wanted to join the Navy and become a Navy SEAL and you're in buds and then you're going to go through all the horribleness that's necessary for you to actually earn the right to get a trident, you think you're going to wake up a single day and have passion for what you're doing? Think of anybody in their life that's actually spent 
uh, time believing that in order for them to be successful at something, it takes anything other than doing what they don't want to do when they don't want to do it at the highest level. There's a certain level of business and frankly, personal maturity that you have to arrive at before you're able to internalize and enjoy the benefits of having that mindset. Totally agree. And it is something that you can achieve, you know, uh, let's see three most important goals for 2023. Okay. First one, maintaining my magic number of three, your magic number is the number of active listings you must keep in your own inventory at all times to drive the number of closings monthly to meet or exceed your goals. So Brad's going to have three active listings, which will net him. And he's already proving this three closable transactions per month. Now, sometimes those are two buyers in one listing. Sometimes it's two listings in one buyer, but three so far, and we'll have to monitor that together. That number may rise with longer days on the market, but you know, he's also learned to kill it with open houses. So it can work. All right. Uh, magic number three, most important goal of 2023. I will achieve this by increasing skills in proactive lead generation, follow-up furiously and fast, of course, presenting, negotiating, and closing. Next thing, organize and systematize all other tasks and responsibilities and stick to my daily schedule with discipline and focus. Let's go back after we're done reading all of this sure. and then you and I can make some comments because okay. I'm sure your brain's firing off for things yeah. to add to this as well. You got it. All right. So the next section was his goals in five areas of life. Yep. Go ahead. All right. First goal, financial goal for 2023 is to earn at least 150,000 GCI, which makes sense with everything else we just said. Next physical goal is to increase the frequency of my cardio and stretching to three days a week. Mental goal is to meditate at least 15 minutes daily. Educational goal is, to, is for script mastery, memorize, internalize, and Brad eyes. I like that. Uh, scripts in lead generation, lead follow-up, presenting, negotiating, and closing. And the family goal is to teach and delegate more responsibilities to our children. He has somebody in uh, first grade and third grade are his kids' ages. He needs to teach us how to do that. <laughs> I know, exactly. Uh, lots of home maintenance can be shared now that they're older. They will learn to do more on their own. Things like laundry, dishes, pool, yard care. This is in addition to the chores they already have, such as cleaning their rooms, etc. We as parents will be more consistent in their weekly allowance for these chores. Pretty sure you and I are failing in that last category, Julie. Yes, Brad's going to have to reverse coach me on some of this. <laughs> okay. Uh, ideal daily schedule. So you can see the progression. Now we're going to do something about it. How is he going to accomplish this? 6 a.m., wake up and meditate. 6.30, exercise. 7 a.m., get ready for the day and get the kids to school. 9 o'clock, start work, lead generation and follow-up. 12 p.m. as lunch, 1 o'clock appointments for the afternoon. If no appointments, back to lead generation and follow-up. 5 p.m. close and finalize all, all open tasks. 5.30 to 9 p.m. family time. And 9 to 10, get ready for the next day and go to bed. Okay. And again, we're going to circle back on some of these. So three things I'm looking forward to in 2023. The challenge of earning and maintaining my magic number of three listings at all times. I love how that's his number one answer there. Using and tweaking my new systems to streamline the business and stay focused for profit. Improving my skills in the five important areas of my business. Proactive lead generation, furiously fast lead follow-up, presenting, negotiating, and closing. Next question, what still needs to happen in 2022 for me to be proud? One more deal under contract for a buyer and a new listing agreement signed. See, he's staying focused even though we're in the holidays, right? Well, this is all, this is fantastic. Um, so I was going to criticize a little bit with regards to, um, I'm sure his coach will help him with mm -hmm. this, but yep. the specifics that I'm seeing that are a little bit missing under the goals section um, would be having specific action plans behind the goals. And so Brad, you got to get your real yep. estate treasure map done. You probably already have, I'm guessing based on everything you just said, but go when you're, you're in premier coaching. So make sure you get your real estate treasure map done, which goes through the process of helping you set goals in the five areas of life, which are. Ah, you put me on the spot there. Let me <laughs> see if I can remember them. Financial, family, physical, mental or spiritual, and educational. There you go. And um, now remember, when setting goals, you don't have to have goals under all five categories. You have a very busy life, especially with three little munchkins, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And so the reality of it is, is there might be some aspects of your life of the you know five areas of life that a lot of people like to say are the most important areas of life that are not necessarily getting the right amount of, or not getting the, the focus that say, for example, family, and I'm glad you're focusing on physical and financial. Those are probably the three most important areas of your life right now, because you're in that stage of life where you're raising kids and you got to stay healthy and you got to earn money, right? So that makes sense. 
Don't feel bad, listeners, is what I'm saying. If you don't have this mythical balance thing in your life, uh, I read this mm-hmm. all the time. Everybody who is, mm-hmm. you know, they churn out books, podcasts, all these different things. How to have balance in your life in 2023. Uh-huh. Look, guys, we're going to give you a little secret here. There's no such thing as balance in your life. And I know that's like on some sort of almost um, a spiritual, almost religious uh, thing for some of you trying to work towards having balance in your life. It's impossible to have balance in your life. Um, but at the same time, we're not suggesting that you have massive imbalance in your life. Remember I said there's five areas of life and Brad's focusing on three. Well, that means he's probably going to be neglecting some other aspects of his life. And that's fine because at the end of the day, it all works out as you get older, or maybe even when you were younger, you were focusing on different things. But really guys, at the end of the day, in this market, you got to be focusing on what's going to be putting relatively short term, um, Frankly, money in your pocket. Yes, absolutely. Because if you focus on that, and that's the other thing, Brad, I was noticing was slightly omitted. You said getting to your magic number of listings, which is three listings every day, which is great. So the three listings, um, in order for you to do that, you got to work the numbers backwards and your coach will help you with this. Mm -hmm. I'll suggest, Brad, that you need to increase your average number of uh, listings, your magic number of listings rather, to uh, five listings at all times. The difference between three and five is not that big of a deal. And here's why you are overcorrecting for a perhaps, um, you know, in Orlando, it's a vacation market in Orlando. A lot of the sales are going to be to people that are going to be buying second and third homes. So maybe that market slows down a little bit more than Mm -hmm. what the national markets will be. And days on the market may stretch out as a result. Exactly. So if you have five listings at all times, Brad and everyone else, that means pretty much on average, you're going to have at least one of those listings sell per month. It is real. It's realistic to assume that's true. Which in Orlando means your average commissions is still going to be ten or twelve thousand mm-hmm. dollars, depending on how much you're paying to your broker. And Brad, why aren't we talking about EXP Realty? You know, text me directly at five one two seven five eight zero two zero six. For those of you who are looking to join EXP Realty and you've not yet chosen your sponsor and you're looking for a sponsor that's going to be very proactive in your success, let's have that conversation. Text me directly, 512-758-0206. So Brad, when you're trying to work towards having, say, for example, five listings at all times, and yes, I am a coach, and yes, I know I'm trying to push you out of your comfort zone of having three listings at all times, move to having five listings at all times, you're going to need to work the numbers backwards. So And again, this is a slight omission, which we should definitely be helping you drill down on. And your real estate treasure map will work you through this as well. Well, let's say how many contacts are you going to make a day? Now, contacts to say, for example, centers of influence and past clients um, are going to be slightly more valuable than, say, just listed and just sold cars calls. But none of them are contacts, but none of them are going to be as valuable in this market as expired. So you're going to have to really make a decision to really go after the uh, work that's going to garner you the most, frankly, beneficial financial benefit, but at the same time, it's going to require the most skill. If listeners, you're finding yourself going towards the things that are easy, chances are those are the things that require the least amount of skill. And if you're really wanting to drill down on this in your head, ask yourself, here's a little game, Brad and everybody else listening. Here's the game. Ready? Brad said he wanted to have one more closing this year, which is great, or one more pending this year, which is great. But let's say by the end of January, you guys all have to have three active listings. And when you take three active listings, remember, this is just make believe. This is just a contest, right? Imagine if you will. Imagine if you will that you have essentially a million dollars tax paid handed to you. If that doesn't motivate you, we pay off your house. If that doesn't motivate you, you know, figure out something. The point of it is, is a really outsized Uh, benefit to you taking three listings. What will you stop doing? This is the question. What will you stop doing now? Where are you spending your money that you know and your time that where you know uh, that is not going to result in you taking three listings by the end of January, right? What would you stop doing? I love asking that question, especially in live audiences, because you see instantaneously all the people that thought they should be filling their lives with social media, all of them, all of a sudden they have unbelievable, complete clarity. Okay, and I, we've done this so many times, I can actually see past faces in my head right now mm-hmm. of having asked that question. So now that you know what you'd stop doing, what would you be doing? Um, and then the answer is, well, I'd be obviously trying to proactive, have proactive conversations with people who have their hands in their air right now saying, yes, I want to sell my house. Then the next question is, why aren't you doing that? And the answer is, you don't know how. That's why. And the you don't know how part isn't just what to say or how to say it, but the you don't know how part is also when to call them. Uh, how to move past your fear, how to really move forward all the while not being certain of the result. 
these are all skills based things that again, if you're, you know, deciding you wanted to be in the Navy SEALs and you had to get through buds, you don't know what the hell's going to happen in the next second, let alone the next day, but you still push forward. That's called somebody who's actually serious about accomplishing a goal. Hopefully this is all hitting home with a lot of you guys. You cannot be doing passive stuff as your prominent lead source in 2023. The market will eat you alive. There are no two ways about that. And if you struggled in the last six months of 2022, when the market really started to noticeably change with interest rates, it's because you were doing passive lead generation stuff and you actually did not adapt fast enough to the new market. So the last six months should have served as a warning for all of you that you need to be taking seriously pivoting your business model. Here's the thing that kind of, you know, this is a little bit disheartening when I read this and we get messages like this often. I have actually a call with somebody today at 2.30 about something very similar to this. They're, um, they had a great year last year. Mm -hmm. They sold like 60 million. This is 2021. And then uh, first half of 2022, they're tracking to do the same thing. And then they're just, their business just fell off a cliff. Right. And for the last six months, what they've been doing is trying to make what they were doing before work again. They're just yeah. trying to revive the dead patient, basically. In a totally different market. Right. They had the paddles out. You know, I'm going to give the <laughs> yeah. shock to buying buyer leads. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> Still doesn't work. Nope. Right. And so what happened is a lot of people are trying to make old business models work in this new market. And it, they won't. And maybe they do, but they're not going to work at the same level. And this, again, the real test is if you had to take three listings in the next, say, you know, now it's going to be roughly 30 days. What wouldn't you be doing? What would you stop doing? I know what you'd stop doing. All the things you've been doing that haven't gotten you the results that you were promised. Stop doing them. If they didn't work in a great market, they will not work in a transitioning market, let alone the market that is becoming. Well, that's for sure. And the real estate treasure map is the tool that will get you those answers. So for example, one of the things the treasure map asks you is where has your business been coming from? Well, one of the things that's different about 2022 is where your business came from in the first half of the year might have completely come to a screeching halt like your 2.30 call this afternoon. And so you almost have to look at it as two different years and then project forward. What will you be doing? And you know what's funny when we do that at live events, you mentioned, when we ask them what they will be doing, usually there's crickets first because mm -hmm. their mind's going, oh crap, I should be, I know I should be doing. You guys all know that you should be being more proactive. But it takes a market shift to force you to change your ways. Those of you who are not willing to pivot and upgrade your scripts and your skills, you know, the conversations that agents have to have with a motivated seller who has to sell, like with a time frame, you know, perfect seller that you want to be working with, those conversations are far different than someone says, you know what, I'll let you have the listing. We'll throw it on the market, see if we can get that, you know, 20% over market at, over the comps, see how it goes, you know, that's okay. Those conversations are going away. And now you're, you are talking with sellers who ask you, why should I list with you versus so-and-so that I'm talking to tomorrow afternoon? That wasn't happening so much before. So if you're not upgrading your scripts, your skills, and if you don't have a plan going into next year, you are planning to fail. Well, so you're saying even your mama and your centers of influence, they're, they're going to ask you some questions. They're not just handing you the business anymore. Nope. You've got to earn it. That's right. Right. So guys, it's obvious at this point that the market's changed. It's obvious at this point the market's not going to pop back to the way it was. Um, so you got to adjust to the market or, you know, this is going to be uh, your last year in real estate and, or this is going to create so much stress in your life that you're going to wish you would have taken better action on these things. Now, here's the best part, guys. Everyone can do it. What we're asking you guys to do is really set aside your misconceptions about what you're capable of. You can, if look, even if you struggled in the past market, chances are you're going to survive in this market. If you learn the skills faster than other agents have been able to adapt, that's the create this market like this creates huge amounts of opportunity. It always goes back in my head. I don't remember who said this, but the greatest fortunes of man have always been made during the greatest times of change. Mm -hmm. The greatest right. fortunes of man have always been made during the greatest times of change. For many of you, 74%, I happen to know, of you have only sold real estate in the last 15 years, which means you have never sold real estate during a great time of change. You've only sold real estate in a time, frankly, that will not be replicated anytime soon, where the Fed was pumping bazillions of dollars, literally, into the markets and keeping interest rates artificially low. So you guys have been essentially selling real estate in a, um, in essence, an artificial market, a market that was under a whole bunch of stimulants. It was and, subsidized, essentially. And uh, what was what are the things that uh, weightlifters take? Oh, steroids. steroids. Yeah. yeah, the market was on steroids. The That's market a really was good on way to put the, it. the market was on steroids. 
and had a whole bunch of artificial stimulants, right? And now it's all, it's sorting itself out. And you got to be part of the new market. You got to be part of the agents that actually are willing to do what they don't want to do and they don't want to do at the highest level. Now, I want to be very clear because I have noticed that some of our competitors are trying to pigeonhole us because they know our message is pure. You can't really argue with what Julie and I are saying. It's self-evident. All of you intuitively know what we're saying is the truth. But I have noticed that some of them are trying to pigeonhole us into uh, having you guys believe that we are not proponents of marketing and advertising and branding. We absolutely are. 100%. We love social media. We love marketing and branding. Of course we do. But we're smart enough and experienced enough to know that in real estate, you do not have to uh, lead with that. Matter of fact, you shouldn't lead with that. So if you believe that when you get into the real estate business or when you believe, if you believe that in order to grow your real estate business, it means throwing more money at marketing and advertising, uh, if you're thinking that's what you should be doing now, and I've heard a lot of people say this, uh, what are you going to be doing differently in 2023 now that essentially the world is essentially shifting and the agents that have the skill sets and the ones that are willing to do the proactive work are making all the money, what are you going to be doing? And I'm hearing agents say, um, I see this a lot on Instagram. I'm going to be spending more money on passive lead generation. I'm going to be spending more money on marketing, more money on pay-per-click, more money on direct mail. Well, I want you all to think about something. You're actually planning on spending a lot of money into a market because you're being told that that'll help you capture more market share. And you're saying, well, everyone's saying this. This is what books say. This is what gurus say. Spend money, get more market share. What if I were to tell you guys that's all a bunch of BS? What if I were to tell you guys that at the end of the day, the second you stop spending money on marketing and advertising, six months later, no one's even going to remember your name and your phone number because you never actually built a real stable business. And that's what happens. Because here's the fascinating thing about it, um, what we're experiencing that's going to be abnormal for a lot of you who've never learned how to be proactive lead generators. That stuff actually becomes less effective in a market like this. You want proof? Okay, here it is. Look at the earnings numbers from Facebook. Look at the earnings numbers from Google. Look at the look what the biggest advertisers or the biggest brands, if it, you know, biggest companies in the world are doing with their marketing spend in 2023. They're not spending as much. And again, if you want to look at proof, look at the look at Facebook and look at uh, Google and look at some of the other um, ad sources. They're losing money. They're not making as much money as they did in the past because the big advertisers are cutting back. Why are the big advertisers cutting back? And I'm talking about the biggest, you know, Procter and Gamble and you know GM and just the biggest names, you know, insurance companies. Why are they spending less money? And why are you thinking it's smart to spend more money? Do you think that you're smarter than what these big companies have known from being in business for hundreds of years? Do you think you're smarter, you can outsmart what the big companies know after hundreds of years of experience succeeding in any kind of market condition? Doesn't make sense, does it? And yet, that's what these supposed know-it-all gurus are telling you to do. You know why they're telling you to do that? Because they don't know what else to tell you. Because all they know how to do is tell you marketing and branding, marketing and branding, because they don't know how to help you guys be proactive lead generators. So you want me to prove it even further to you? Look to see how many of these supposed marketing branding types are now trying to lean in to being proactive lead generators. They're trying to essentially tell you guys to do what we've always been telling you to do, right? It's because they know what they're telling you to do doesn't work in a market like this. Common sense here, folks. So here's the takeaway. Yes, we love marketing and branding. Yes, we you know we have a lot of fun on social and the rest of it. And um, you know you guys seem to appreciate the pictures we put up in the videos we put up on Instagram and whatnot, which is great. But it has to come secondarily to learning how to be a proactive lead generator. And real estate is a really strange. I actually cannot think other than healthcare. I thought about this. Mm -hmm. There's no other business where you actually have built-in customers without ever having, having to spend a single uh, cent on marketing and advertising. Yes, that's true. I guess it claimed clear to me when Zoe had her tonsils <laughs> out last Wednesday yes. how true that is. Yeah, that's right. And nor do you have to actually buy and stock your own inventory and all of the other great things which are known as the blessing called your real estate license. So now your goal over the next, you know, now is to get involved with Premier Coaching, is to get your real estate treasure map. Just text the word Premier, P-R-E-M-I-E-R, -E to 47372, or simply go to premiercoaching.com. Don't enter next year or even next week without a plan. Be like Brad. Look how introspective he was from that email and from those questions, which gave him the direction that is going to take him to his goals. I can, I mean, I've talked to Brad. I can guarantee you, 
he probably will do better than three transactions per month consistently because of all of the things that he's implementing and how drilled down and focused he is. Absolutely. So how many of you listening can relate to that? And how many of you are going, well, maybe I've got some work to do. So the first thing for you to do is to text the word premiere to 47372. So believe that you can be successful in any market, no matter what direction the market's going. Believe that you have more, you have what it takes, you know, in abundance. Believe that there's no shortage of opportunities for yourself in real estate. Believe that 2023 is going to be not just an amazing year for you, but the start of amazing years to follow. Every year will get better. There is, again, a false belief that success or having, you know, it's people believe that life is like a roller coaster. It doesn't have to be. You can have, to Brad's point, ever increasing levels of success in your business and personal life. As long as you take those repetitious actions every single day and you do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level, lead with proactive lead generation. And then if you want to do the passive stuff, the marketing, the branding and whatnot, do it after you've mastered the art and the science of the proactive lead generation. And the best part, frankly, guys, and this will shock many of you, it is a hell of a lot easier to be good at the proactive lead generation than it is to ever hack your way through being successful on social or through marketing and branding. There's no comparison. Now, you know what's interesting about that is on the with regards to the social media and the speculative stuff, those rules, even if you start to get a little nibble of something, those companies are going to change the rules on you. Whereas proactive lead generation, rarely do the rules change. That's why they call it sometimes back to basics is because guess what? The basics that started your workout will always work. The ratios, for example, of talking to an unrepresented seller or an expired or both are so much superior to speculating with anything online. I mean, how many impressions and touches do you have to have and how many quote leads, which don't even belong to you that you paid for, which are not even an appointment. I mean, when you look at it that way, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, think of the asininity of it, right? Yes. So when you're a proactive lead generator, uh, every single day you get your list of expires. We su- we suggest you guys uh, subscribe to Red X. And if you want a huge discount, just text the word RED, R-E-D, to 47372. Text the word RED, R-E-D, to 47372. And they'll do all the research for you for expired phone numbers and contacts and all that good stuff. Yeah, so every single day, you're going to get a fresh list of all the expires. And this is just one of the 20 different lead sources we prescribe for you guys in the Premier Coaching Program. Every single day, you're getting a list of people that say, yes, I want to sell my house. It is a direct conversation that you're then going to have. You, the seller, then you pre-qualify them. Then you go out and present to them. You send the pre-listing pack, you present to them, you take the listing. Think think how simple that is. Think And and 100% of those people not only are showing, hey, I have a house to sell, but they also have shown a willingness to list. There was a real estate sign in the yard. Doesn't it make sense? You being a real estate professional should be speaking with somebody who has this need. Versus all the things you have to do to hopefully one day generate a lead off YouTube. You guys get it? Think about that. Which may or may not even be qualified. Exactly. Well, yeah, I know. That's the other thing I love. When I see people, I generated 20 leads off YouTube last year. Uh Oh, who cares? Yeah. Do one open house and you'll generate 30. Seriously. You know, get your head out of the clouds, guys. Get down to the, you know, a frank, essentially get down to ground level where you can be a massive service to potential buyers and sellers. Focus all your best energies on becoming listing agents. If you're already a listing agent, take your game to the next level. If it's already easy for you to have five or 10 listings at all times, double your number for 2023. Think about the downside of what we're prescribing for you guys. More money, more net profit, fewer headaches. More predictability. More predictability, <laughs> less stress. Oh, so, here's one. More money for you. Yeah, exactly. More money. And by the way, more free time too. Not less free time. You get more of everything you want in your life. Or you can essentially do what essentially everyone else tells you guys to do, which results in a lot of uncertainty, a lot of nervousness, um, really lead sources that are not predictable and duplicatable. Unnecessary expenditure, both your time and your money. Yeah. And frustration. I can tell you every single day that when you wake up using our system, you're going to wake up to fresh expired or for sale by owners or all these other different lead sources we uh, suggest you guys chase. Every single day, you're going to have a fresh list of people. Can you do that with social? Can you do that? No, no. And again, remember, if you get a list of, say, for example, notice default leads, or if you get a list, for example, of um, probate leads or expired leads or for sale by owner leads, whatever it is, and we, again, 20 different sources, those are actually people that have pre-qualified themselves. They have already said, I want you to sell a house. 
Not you know, No Mickey Mouse there. They've already pre-qualified themselves. Now you qualify them again for their motivation and time frame and you know, whether they have realistic expectations, we teach you how to do that. And then you just follow the process. Why would that not be more appealing than say, for example, deciding you're going to be a YouTube star? <laughs> yeah. I don't even have a response for that anymore. I know. I don't either. But we have to keep saying it, Julie. We have I to know, keep telling them because okay. we are one voice in a you know a storm of other voices. That's true. And we're the only ones that are telling them, frankly, the truth about what it takes to be successful long-term in real estate. But also, by the way, guys, long-term in life as well. So thank you for continuing to make this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals. We're going to run encore presentations for the rest of the week, probably into next week of our most downloaded and listened to and and probably commented podcasts throughout the entire year. Um, Again, guys, this podcast has had well over 20 million downloads. It continues to be the number one listened to daily podcast for real estate professionals in the United States. I have two closing thoughts for you. A great Christmas gift for yourself or a loved one is a copy of our book, Harris Rules, available at every major bookseller. Obviously, the quickest way to get it is Amazon. And um, again, it's also a great gift idea. And number two, you should consider sending this podcast to every single real estate practitioner you know um, that you are fearful of uh, that might be struggling or experiencing higher levels of stress than necessary. Because the reality of it is, is there's not going to be any lack of of opportunity and people to help in the new year, provided you have no lack of desire to be a service provider that's earned the right to be of service to them because you have the skill set that this market's going to demand. Guys, this is something to be excited about. Your tomorrow absolutely is going to be better than your today. We appreciate you. We love you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. And a special pre-shout out to our incoming class of new coaching clients, which are all going to sign up before the end of the year. Our class of 2023, we always welcome you. You've got a daily semi-private call with our coaches. We can't wait to get to know you. And if you're already involved in our coaching, again, happy holidays to you. Keep listening and we will see you on live shows once the year flips over. Your homework now is to join Premier Coaching. It is free. Download the real estate treasure map. Get that completed. That is your fill in the blank business and life plan. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. Remember when texting, message and data rates may apply. Happy holidays, everyone. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.